Welcome, Guardians. I'm Wolby1079, part of a team that tends to run high-end content, like Gilded Conqueror, solo content, etc. And I've had a few requests asking how we set up our loadouts to be able to run that kind of content, choose mods, and use the most appropriate armor to get the highest stats we can with that. Right now we're looking at my Hunter. No mods, not great optimized stats, wrong subclass, wrong weapons. By the time we reach the end of this video, be showing you how to make automated changes like what just happened, including ships, sparrows, your weapons, your mods, and have some optimized stats and have all those stats get automatically applied. While I've been talking, you should have seen the stats changing here as well. And now this unmodified armor has now been modified with all the stats, changed to an exotic, and this hunter is now ready to go. The build we're going to be doing today is going to be using two different applications. Both of them are web apps. One's called Destiny 2 Armor Picker. The other one is called Destiny Item Manager. Now, both of these apps I'll have linked in the description of the YouTube video once it gets posted. Uh, and both of them have pluses and minuses depending on how exactly it is that you plan on using them. First one we're going to start off with is D2 Armor Picker. And this is what it looks like. There's a few different features available on this app, one of which is the fact that you can choose your stats that you want to achieve, how many mod slots you want to use, which exotic you want to use in your build, and what desired mods and skill selections you want to use from both the combat style mods and your stasis fragments. One of the things that, you do, that I do want you to keep in mind as you go through and do these builds is that the resulting sets that will show up on the right hand side of your screen uh, does have a bit of a bug in the current version where it will not necessarily optimize a piece of armor if it already has stat modifying mods in it, especially the combat mods. Um, but for the armor we're going to be doing today, I've already stripped all the mods, all the stats off of it. The build I'm about to show you is one that I've developed for running the new Grasp of Avarice Dungeon solo, Flawless, uh, which is what prompted the need for this video. For that build, I'm going to be using Charge Harvester and Powerful Friends. And you'll notice that it says update res updating results, so as you make all these changes, it will update on the fly. Uh, you definitely want to pick your exotic. For this one, I'm going to be using Six Coyote. And I know with the build I'm going to be running, I will not have any extra energy left in my cloak or in my class item, more specifically, in order to um, get the mods that I want. So I'm going to remove an available mod slot and say that instead of five, I only have available four. I've punched a lot of changes into this so far, so I'm just going to give it a second to refresh and state that while that's refreshing, your desired elemental affinity uh, can be forced. Uh, this is also one that would be helpful at some point. However, I have noticed that this is also potentially a little bit buggy. Uh, so you may or may not get the results you're looking for if you try to use that. Try to keep it general. Next thing I'm going to do here is start picking out my stats. Now, in this particular build, I'm going to be using an Invis Hunter, so I want to have my dodge up as much as possible, which means 100 mobility. I'm going to be relying on my super as well, and although there was recently a change to the way int uh, affects super, this will still result in a few seconds and seconds count. Uh, you can actually see in the super cooldown tooltip that it'll tell you how many seconds for each super it will take to regen your full super energy. I will state that some of these tooltips are not necessarily up to date. So for mobility, it says dodge cooldown from UI is 11 seconds. That is no longer true. Uh, it will down depend on your dodge. Uh, and it is no longer 11 seconds. It's going to be based on a few different factors. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and select 100 intelligence here as well, or intellect, I should say. I also want to have as high possible recovery. Now, if I go to the top available recovery on this particular build, my resilience, my discipline is just a little bit too low for what I'd like. So I'm going to back it off one. That's going to open up a couple more options. I'm going to prioritize resilience over discipline and then just finish off the rest. Now, in this particular instance, it's given me only one resulting armor set. It has only used four mods. Unfortunately, there's 11 wasted stat points in there, but nothing I can do about that. And if I hit the down arrow, I can see exactly what pieces it's deciding it wants to use, including its elemental affinity. Now, I can say I don't want to use that particular item 
But if I do that in this case, I'm not going to have any results at all. So I'm going to go with what I have. It does tell me my stat summaries, what I've gotten from gear, what I've gotten from configuration, major mods, minor mods, etc. Uh, I'm hoping at some point the move items to inventory and equip items uh, will come out of beta and will actually work. At the moment, it does not. So I'm going to go through and say copy dim query to clipboard and then go over to Destiny Item Manager to finish off the rest of this build. Now, once I go to De Destiny Item Manager, <clears throat> I can put this query into the search bar up top and it will highlight all the items that I've selected in my inventory. As you can see, I've already got it in my inventory except for the class items. One of the things Destiny 2 uh, D2 Armor Picker does not specify is your class item because it states any class item can be used. I'm going to go ahead and drag these items onto my equipped inventory. And I'm doing this for a reason. Because I'm going to finish off the rest of the stat build for this um, particular loadout within the loadout builder of Destiny Item Manager. So if you click on of this the loadouts button you can say loadout optimizer or create loadout i'm going to go loadout optimizer and if i want to go with what exactly i've already equipped now from d2 armor picker i can say pin equipped and it will equip everything that i've already gotten there i am however going to show you how you can do that exact same type of build using just destiny item manager few things you want to do in Destiny Item Manager is prioritize what you want for stats. I usually, in a build like this, will prioritize Intellect because it is the highest, most expensive stat to mod. I want to have high mobility. After that, I've gone Recovery. Then I went Resilience, Discipline, and Strength in that order. And it's given me a lot of different options, including at the very top, the existing loadout. Now I can change that and say I do want to be able to take a look at other armor as well including if it's not masterworked or if I have to change its, its elemental affinity. So I can go to Armor Upgrades and select Ascendant Shard. And that'll change things up a bit. However, as I've already stated, I want six Coyote on this build. So I can select Exotic, go to Chest Armor, select six Coyote. Now my currently equipped is coming up to the top again, which is great and hopeful, which means they're doing most, more, more or less the same thing. However, this is where we can now pick up where we left off from Destiny 2 Armor Picker and start selecting our mods. What this is going to do is try to optimize mod placement in the armor, use as many of the points as possible, make sure there's as few energy points wasted as it possibly can. I like to start from the bottom just because that's where the combat mods are and then add on where I have extra points. I'm not going to be using anything from Nightmare, Elemental, or Warmind mods. I am going to be using some Charge with Light, however. Now I'm going to be using Powerful Friends, because you can't get cheaper 20 mobility points if you tried. I'm going to be using a couple others as well, including Charge Harvester, because I want to get that first free Charge with Light charge. This is going to be a Sword build, so I'm going to go in there and add Lucent Blade as well. I also want Taking Charge just because I don't want my only source to be that one charge. I want to have as many as possible. And right along the same lines as having as many as possible, I'm going to add on supercharged as well, as soon as I find it. There we are. And there are my combat mods. It select mods, and it tries to slot all those mods into your loadout. Now this is going to change as we carry on. Uh, it's put the void mod in the only void armor piece I have. It's put a arc mod onto a solar piece, so it's telling me that I would have to reassign the elemental affinity of these arms. That is going to change as we continue on. And currently, supercharged is on the legs. That too, I suspect, is going to change. I'm going to go in there and start selecting the rest of my mods again. Now, this is going to be a sword build. So under the helmet, I'm going to go ahead and pick two sword ammo finders as soon as I find them. Now, ammo finders will stack, but ammo scavengers will not. So when I go down to my leg armor, I'm only going to pick one sword scavenger. I'm going to choose the one point from this season's artifact. 
Now, another nice piece about DIM is the fact that it will now allow for artifice armor slots if you happen to have artifice armor. I do have leg artifice armor, so it is showing that I have the ability to do that. However, in this build, I know that that artifice armor is just not going to slot the way I want to, so I'm not going to choose that particular item. The other thing I do like on my legs, if I don't have any other place to spend points, is in Absolution, but I'm going to hold off on that one for now. Under the chest slot, there's going to be a lot of Fallen in this dungeon, so I'm going to be choosing Arc Resist, since there's going to be a lot of incoming Arc Damage. And on my arms, I know there are no champs, I know I'm not going to be too worried about reloads, but I do like having Fastball. So again, I'm going to hit Select Mods, and we can see already that there have been some changes. The Elemental Affinity has moved off of the arms. It's now telling me I need an Elemental Affinity change on my cloak. Again, this is where you can make a change if you don't want to use what's already assigned. I happen to know I already have an Arc Cloak available. So I'm going to choose the Change Armor button and select my already Arc Cloak. Now I don't have to spend any materials on changing any Elemental Affinities. At this point, I like going through and reass reassessing all of the point spend, see if there's anything else I can put on there. I do know that I still need to put in some stat mods in order to hit that 10 mobility that I'm looking for. So I'm going to need four of those. And I've only spent four points on my cloak, but this is a sword build, and I have not yet chosen the sword mod for the cloak. So I go back in, select my four mobility mods. I'm going to go with the major mobility for plus 10. And on my class item, Passive Guard. It's going to help me avoid some of the damage as long as my sword's out. Again, select mods. And it's, again, updated. I'm now seeing I got 10 intellect, 10 mobility, 6 recovery. It's exactly what I aimed for. On the headpiece, I've already used 10. On the arms, I've only used 7. I could find something else to slot in there if, they, if something will fit. On the chest, Two arc mods, stat, and loosened blade. I've already used now nine on the legs. One for the sword ammo scavenger, five for supercharge, and three for uh, my stat. And then I've already used all ten on the cloak. Now, these points don't seem quite optimized yet. I know I've got extra points in the arms, extra points in the legs. I'm going to go back in now and choose that absolution from the leg armor. Now, I didn't have three points left on the legs, but as soon as I selected it, it's now reorganized the mods again. Supercharge has now moved to the arms. I now have absolution on my legs. I've used a lot more points. Again, 10 on the helm, nine on the arms, nine on the chest. Can't do anything about that. That's one place I did wish I had some affinity armor, sorry, some artifice armor, because I already always have points available there. All 10 on the legs and all 10 on the cloak. Not a bad build overall. At this point, I'm going to save that loadout. This will be a sixth Coyote sword. And save. Now, there's a few more things I can do with this build that will allow for some of those automatic changing of my vehicles, my weapons, my subclass. To do that, however, I have to go in and actually change the loadout. So I'm going to the loadouts section, find my sixth Coyote sword. We can now see that it's got all of the pieces needed. Each of those pieces do not yet have any of those mods actually on them. And here are the mods that have been assigned. I can, however, still edit this build and add a few more things in. I can add my elemental subclass. I know this is going to be an invis build, so void. I can't choose which of the three void sections I want. I do want top tree on this one, but I have to do that in game. I can choose my kinetic energy and power weapons. I know that on this particular build, I want to go in with an SMG, and I got a relatively decent cold front this season. Energy weapon, going to go in with the always reliable high DPS Cartesian coordinate. And for power weapons, this is a sword build. Can't beat Lament for healing while you're doing damage. The other thing we can do is choose our ghost emblems and ships. For this particular one, I want to be able to use the Shell of Gilgamesh because it's already loaded out with the right mods I want. My emblems, might as well show off a bit. Ships, doesn't really matter which one I want to use. 
do like the Black Armory ship, however. And for vehicle, if you have it, the always on time is great for that dungeon. Now I can just hit save, and it's updated the build along with the shell, the ship, and the sparrow, and now my weapons. Now the benefit to this is that once this loadout is done, it can now be selected from the main inventory screen, from the loadout screen, or from anywhere where you've got the three dots sitting on the side of the Hunter logo. If I go to inventory, you can select it from here. Inside the loadouts, you can hit apply. There's a couple other places as well, but those are the two most common. Now, I'm going to switch over into an overlay view, show you what's happening inside Destiny itself. Here's a smaller section of DIM itself, so we can kind of see what's going on. Anytime you've made any changes to your armor, equipped anything, you do want to hit the refresh button. DIM will only change what it's aware of. So in this particular instance, it knows that I now have this piece on. It's got no stat mods in it, no other mods, period. DIM believes that I have, for my weapons, equipped an Ace of Spades, an Uzume, and my sword. But we want this to change. Now, this armor was all put on earlier. when We brought it over from D2 Armor Picker. This is the wrong cloak. This is still a cloak from the last one. We should have the arc cloak on. But I'm going to leave that cloak off for the moment, just so you can see exactly what's happening here. When I go to dim, I can hit the three dots, go down to my sixth coyote sword, and if you watch the stats closely, and the armor pieces themselves, you'll see all the weapons and armor start to get changed out. And on the bottom of the window here, you'll see that it's applying loadout with 12 items. This will apply 17 mods. So because it is aware of the fact that that armor has no mods on it currently, we're going to go through and apply everything we just finished doing in the loadout optimizer. As we go down the list, Helm's already done. It was empty, now it's fully modded. Same thing with the grips. Same thing with the Six Coyote. Dreambane Strides. And now it has replaced the Solar Cloak I did have with the Arc Cloak and modded that as well. I can't move this dim window out of the way at the moment. However, if I go through and give you simply the full window without dim, we can also now see that the weapons have been put in. There's my Cold Front, my Cartesian Lament. It's put on my Shell of Gilgamesh, changed out my ship and my Sparrow. DIM can change the uh, emblem that you have equipped as well. There is one minor issue with that, however. And that is when you're inside of Destiny Item Manager, if you happen to have multiple emblems, for instance, the emblem I tried to equip was one of three that I already had. Emblems don't move like other equipment does within DIM and within Destiny, so I had to pick the right one. I obviously picked wrong. If I want to change that, however, I can just by saying emblems or add equipped. So if I go back into Destiny, and I'm just going to select it right now without changing screens, I can tell Destiny Item Manager to refresh and add equipped. And now it has re-equipped that emblem, and it's the right one that my hunter does have on. I can now resave, and when I go in and try to equip this the next time, it will actually equip that emblem as well. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comments. I'll get respond to it if I do see it. Otherwise, have fun with the builds, and good luck in the dungeon.